Good morning. So today is the sixth day of Tevet, the 30th day of December, and we are finishing up, God willing, our learning for this week's Torah portion, Vayigash, with a final Sicha from the Lubavitch Rebbe. Nehemar Bekitve Arizal, we're on page 86. So there are two, there is a specific thing that happens in our Parsha that when Joseph is already the viceroy and he takes care of all the needs of the Egyptians, he says this verse, he says these words, Here is for you seed to eat, to plant, to do whatever you need with. And uh, he gave this to the Egyptians. And the, and the sages say that hey lachem zera, the word hey really meant that they needed to circumcise. I want to get into how they learned this, but that's what they learned. That he forced all the Egyptians to circumcise. And what he had in mind was, they say, two things. On the one hand, he wanted to bring the whole world closer to God. And since that was the only commandment that there was at the time, and he had the power, and he knew it was correct, he wanted to bring everyone un- into a covenant with God. All of Egypt, right. They yeah, sold themselves that. to him because they had no food. And that was one of his uh, requirements, because that is also a requirement for any non-Jewish servant that you b- bring into your household. Right, so he has to be uh, circumcised, and he has to um, uh, immerse in the mikveh, like he's a, as if he's a convert. But the difference is that he's not a convert yet. And in any case, uh, that's what he did, and we learn many things from this. What? They have to keep Shiva Yeah. Yeah. But the moment he keeps something beyond that, then he's automatically converted. So it was a very fine line. That, that supposedly they. I don't know how many actual non-Jewish servants there were in Jewish households. The only picture that I have of something like this actually happening was that there was a person who wanted to convert to Judaism but wasn't sure yet. And so what we do today is that we don't immediately convert someone. We say, okay, live with the Jewish community for a year or something like that and see if it sticks. See if you really want to because it may look good on paper but you need to find out whether it's good in practice for you. And so people do that. And in the past, there wasn't such a, such a possibility. People were not independent. They couldn't live independently. There wasn't such a thing, really. Uh, people didn't go off to live independently. People lived in their family, in their, what, what the Arabs call the chamula. Right? They lived in their tribe. So a Nanju who wanted to come close to, to find out about Judaism, the only way you could do this was by becoming like a household member in someone's house. And so the way that the arrangement was, was that they were like a servant. That's the only picture that I have of anything like this oh, ever happening. The story of the Mamzerim. The Mamzerim? What are you talking about? There's a guy right, who found out that he was a Mamzer. Yeah. He couldn't get married. He right. Married right, 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 I know. So he found a nice girl who wasn't Jewish. Right. And she converted up to now the old Shifcha. Yeah, I understand. And then all the so though, again, it's a hundred percent. And then he became a right, right. she became a committee. Right. 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 All these stories, they have one thing in common. That nobody was ever bought as an indentured servant. <laughs> what she was. No. She wanted it. Again, it's the same story. She was a shifcha. No, she had to do it on t'nai, on condition. So this was prearranged. It wasn't like she was bought in some market. There wasn't such a thing. I don't think that that ever really existed. In any case. It's uh, It's okay. What happens in London, you know, that's, that's, that's something special. That can only happen in London, only under the British Empire. You know, those only yeah, an ex-territory to, for humanity. In any case, so getting back to this, <laughs> how are we going to finish this now? So, on the one hand, was a good thing. And the, the other reason, we didn't say the other reason. The other reason was because he didn't want his brethren to feel out of place. If everybody would be circumcised, and they would be, then they wouldn't feel strange. It, would, it wouldn't be like foreigners. Um, these two reasons, the Arizal says, Rabbi Isaac Luria says, that this was also a negative thing because it added more energy into the impurity in Egypt. 
meaning he gave them something he wasn't supposed to give them. This was something beyond what they were what they were ready for. So bringing them into that kind of covenant of circumcision was too much. And the Ariza also says that the the reparation or the rectification of that is when we at the Seder, the beginning of the Seder, we say, Hey, hey Lachmania, here is the bread of a poverty. And what we're, we're rectifying, meaning in other, in other words, we're saying that's what he should have said. Just Hey Lachem, not Zera, not relating to the seed, to the procreative organ, but rather just here's the bread of poverty. You should have given them something ready that didn't require them to circumcise and so on. In any case, uh, we're going to skip to 10 because we just uh, explained this. Yud. כדי להבין איך מהווה הלך מעניה, הבטחה ותיקון הלך עם זרע, יש להסביר תחילה את הקלקול שנוצר כתוצאה מזה שאמר יוסף, הלך עם זרע. So first we have to understand, why was this a problem that Joseph wanted to bring them into the covenant, and it was too early and so on. לכאורה בלתי מובן מדוע לא הייתה ראויה אמירת יוסף הלך עם זרע למצרים. על פי השכל נראה לכאורה שאין הקדוש יוסף לא זו בבעיה שלא הייתה צריכה להביא נזק, אלא אדרבה היה ביתרון. נוסף על כך שבהיבט העם היא הבהיר, הסיר את חרפת אבחיו שלא קראו להם גולים. ידוע גם עניינו הרוחני של יוסף הוא ראייתו צדיק יסוד לעולם, וכל פעולותיו היו השפעת אלוקות, ואם כן הרי זה הכוונה הרצויה של הפצת והשפעת אלוקות, לא כל, אפילו למצרים. The premise that we should say that this was a good thing was because Joseph is the tzaddik, the foundation of the world. And what does the tzaddik, the foundation of the world do? He brings sustenance to the entire world. So what was wrong with him giving spiritual sustenance, not just physical sustenance, but spiritual sustenance in the form of a covenant, in the form of a circumcision to the Egyptians? On the contrary, this should be something positive. Why was it, why did it cause damage? Yosef asazot midat asamot, because he did it of his own accord. He was not commanded to do this. Now one could say, and that's the question you have to ask about the Rebbe, but the Rebbe doesn't get into this here. This is before there was Torah. So what do you mean he wasn't commanded to do so? So the explanation would be that he did it on his own accord without consulting what we talked about last, last time, that there was, a house of, there was a house of learning, there was a Talmudical, an academy of Torah that Jacob set up, and they made rulings. So he didn't go to them and consulted with them and said, do you think that this is the right thing to do? And they would have ruled on it together. If they would have ruled on it together, even though there wasn't yet Torah, it would have had the, uh, the added benefit of being accepted. But he, didn't, he did this by himself. And that's, I think, what he means, midat by himself. Because there was no Torah that he could have consulted. They had to rule on it. Except Riyakov, Riyakov and his, and his court. So even though it did increase the holiness in Egypt, because he did it of his own accord, by himself, of his own thinking, then it also was an opening for there to be added more impurity to the impurity of Egypt. Because the Egyptians were not yet ready to assume this covenant with God. They weren't ready for it yet. And this actually caused the harshness of the Egyptian exile, says the Arizal. Because this is what was the bread of poverty should have been in the land of Egypt and became the bread of the seed, or, the, or here is seed for you, here is the covenant for you to circumcise your procreative organ. And that is what gave the power to the Egyptians to enslave the Jewish people at the harshness that they did. אמירתו של יוסף אלה חמזרע הייתה סיבה לחוזק הגלות של מצרים. בדומה לכך אנו מוצאים במשה רבנו שעל ידי כך שלקח את הערב רב על דעת עצמו בחטא העגל, כפי שאמר לקדוש ברוך הוא שחטא עמך אשר העלית אתה. The same thing we see happened by Moses. When he took out the mixed multitude, the ערב רב, who was of his own decision, his own accord, he didn't consult with God, he didn't ask him. Should I, take it or, should I take them out or not? And because of that, they caused a lot, of, a lot of misery to the Jewish people. And eventually God said to him, when they built the, the golden calf, they were the ones who instigated that whole affair, um, he said, go down from this mountain. And he took him down from his level of prophecy and said, go down because your nation have rejected me. Your nation, not mine. Meaning it was those people that you took out. 
Now, what does this have to do with anything? So the, the Rebbe wants to learn from this something that is relevant to us today, an in instruction today. So he says like this, this all has to do with how we bring people closer to Torah today. Same thing. So what does this have to do with us today? We demand of our disciples that they bring everyone closer to Torah, to Hashem. Without regard for who this person is. We don't go and check, did you wash your hands today? Did you do this? Did you do that? We don't, we don't ask him about how his personal conduct is. We don't care. Because everybody is worthy of coming closer to, 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 to God. So that's in, in terms of the person. But in terms of what are you bringing them closer to, it has to be 100% Torah. You can't make any hanachot. What do you say hanachot? You can't make any discounts on what the Torah demands and what the Torah is about. That you can't do. That doesn't come into... You can't pull someone in by telling them a false account of what Torah is. You can't say, oh, Torah is just a collected wisdom. It's just this, it's just that. No, no, Torah is the Word of God. The Torah demands that you put fill-in on every day. The fill-in have to be this size, <laughs> at least this size. They, they, you have to put them on in the morning. Okay, you can get away with putting it on, on once in your life. That's also true. But you can't just put them in a... You can't just not put them on. You can't just say this is a, just a, something I need to read every day. It's something practical. You have to do these things. You have to pray every day, three times a day. You, you have to do these, the, these... This is what the Torah says. I can't, I can't give you a false impression of what Torah is. And why would a person want to do that? Why would they want to give them a, someone a false impression? Because they think they're doing them a favor. They think that they're bringing them closer, so it's worth it, to, and justifies the means. Says the Rebbe, Be'etem le'bidgam e'edu'ak shikshe'adam tovea, chovel kol echad la'atzilo, achalav li'zor shelo itbahu atzmo. When someone is drowning, every person should make an effort to save them. But, it should be a person who's not going to drown themselves. Right? You can't, you can't risk drowning yourself if you don't know how to swim well enough. And basically what he's saying is, is that if you begin to change things, you're going to drown yourself. That's the, the, and, and you have to know that there's a completely different approach. A completely different approach is you should be careful not to drown yourself. Therefore, who said that you know how to swim well enough? You shouldn't be the one to, to, to save this person. That's also a false uh, idea. It's not, it's not correct. You probably know how to, how to save them. Because it doesn't take more than just speaking. What guards you from drowning is not how well you know how to swim. What guards you from drowning in this case is how well you protect the explanation that you give from deviation and, and saying something that's not true. You have to say exactly what's true. You, have, you can explain it in many ways, but you have, to, you have to demand exactly what the Torah says. You can't make a false impression of what the Torah is. So the Torah as we said, you have to be from the students of Aaron who brings everyone closer to Torah, that he loves everyone and he brings them closer to the Torah. You love everyone, meaning even someone whose only, whose only positive trait is the fact that he was created by God. That's it. That's all he has. He has the image of God. In him. That's, it's, he has nothing else. He doesn't know a thing. He's not justice. He's not, he's not uh, rightful. He's not, he's not upstanding. He's none of these things. But he's a creature of God. But you have to do it by bringing them closer to Torah and not closer to something that you invented. So the, the argument that people make is when I bring someone closer to Yiddishkeit, why would I want to um, um, make it hard on them? I should make it easier. No, you don't have to have a separate seating for men and women. You don't have to do this. You don't have to do that. He says, on the contrary, when, when should you have all this? when you're in, the, in a society that's already frum, that's already observant. So they can hear these things. But someone who's just coming closer, how, could they, how can they hear all these things? They can't hear it. 
It says, the, the Rebbe says, this is like walking around in your home with a weapon on you. Because in your home, you're safe. <laughs> right? Because there's people like you. So that's where I do, that's where I keep all the, all the, all the uh, stringent uh, decisions of the Torah. This is where I keep the conduct very, it's like walking around like, like with a gun in your home. Because that's where you're comfortable. It doesn't work that way. The gun, the weapon you need on the outside. And here we're not talking about, God forbid, a weapon to hurt someone. We're talking about all the safeguards of why the Torah is the way that it is. You need it when you're on the outside. You don't need it when you're on the inside. When you're amongst people who already keep Torah and mitzvot anyway. So there it's a completely different story. You don't need to talk about it all the time because they'll do it anyway. But when you're talking about some, somebody who's on the outside, so you have to, t- you have to talk about this. But if, uh, so the, there was another thing that the, the once they told the Friediger Rebbe, that when, you're, when you want to drink water, you have to make sure it's clean water. But when you want to put out a fire, you don't have to make sure that the water is clean. So the Rebbe said, the Friedrich Rebbe said, you have to be careful that you're not spilling more oil or gasoline on the fire just because it's a liquid. Yes, it, it doesn't matter what kind of water it is, but it has to be water. And that's what we're saying. Torah is likened to water. It has to be exactly water. Finally, Yudalid, 88, page 88. But then, again, people come and say, but the end justifies the means. So what does it matter if I give up something small now in order to get them closer to to Torah in the first place? Because they're not going to keep anything else if I don't bring them closer now. So this we will have to see, I guess. It doesn't have a minion, so it doesn't matter. Right? It doesn't have a minion. Okay. Afilu me abitachon. אפילו מהיה ביטחון שעל ידי כך תהיה התועלת הגדולה ביותר לקרוא בני ישראל אבים שבשמיים נאמר לחורון דא אל תהי צדיק הרבה. This is the main point that he wants to make. He says, even if you could be 100% certain that this would work, then in the beginning you can, you can say things that are contrary to Torah in order to draw someone in, to make it easier for them. Even if you knew that this was perfectly going to work, what? Yeah. The Torah says, Al ti tzadik Don't be too much of a tzadik. Don't think you're such a big tzadik. Don't think that you, that, that you need to go beyond what the Torah already said. En lo sif tzidkut ala Torah. What the Torah says to do is righteous enough. You don't have to add more righteousness to it. Now this runs into a different conversation we need to have at some point, which is, what comes first, the Jewish people or the Torah? The simple answer is, if you want to be a big tzaddik with someone, Right? You, you want to, somebody who doesn't want to hear anything about Torah, doesn't want to hear anything about mitzvot, doesn't want to hear about how, how, about how things are done. If you want to be such a big tzaddik with them, do what the Baal Shem Tov said. First do a favor in Gashmius, a material favor, and then do a spiritual favor. First of all, take care of this person materially. Let's see you do that. You don't ask him anything. You don't have to put filling on, anything. You need money for the bus, you need money for this, you need... I'll give it to you. I'm very happy to give it to you. I invite you over to my house with no strings attached, just to give you a meal. I, I'm going to talk to you and pay attention to you just because I care about you. That's a, that's a material favor. It's not a Torah favor. It's not, it's not, I'm not changing anything. I'm just going to be your friend. If you're that much of a righteous person, so just be someone's friend. Later, maybe they'll be open to something more spiritual. That's okay. But you can't be more righteous than the Torah in the sense of changing the Torah. That doesn't work. Just be their friend. Take care of their material needs. That's really the answer to someone who says, but I care about the Jewish people, and the Torah itself says that the Jewish people come before the Torah. Okay? So take care of them. That's what the Baal Shem Tov said. But first you do a, sp- a material favor for someone, and then you can do a spiritual favor. And so that was the problem with Joseph, that he went beyond... Uh, what the Torah had said. The Torah didn't say that you needed to circumcise all the Egyptians. The Torah didn't say anything yet, but like we said, it could be that that was something that he should have taken from Jacob's court. And next week we will continue with Parashat Vayichi. And I have some ideas for you about how it's very Mishachis Parsha. Um, I have some ideas for you about what we should learn after we finish Vayichi. We'll talk about that next week. Shabbat Shalom. When are you going to America?